Saturday 18 today. I'll double check that because I got it wrong yesterday. So cycle day, cycle day 18 today. I haven't tested as of yet, but I will go test after this. So I'm using the testing ovulation. I'm using the first response, just the, just the regular um, ovulation tests, and then my clear blue digital. So I am using both of them. Some months I find this one more accurate, some months this one, it really depends. I do get everything confirmed with blood, so I guess these don't really matter, but I still like to do it for my peace of mind as well. Medication wise, I am taking Natalis, I think is how you say it. It's pretty much the exact same as Elevit, just higher dosages of some of the ingredients, and it's a lot cheaper than Elevit. I'm pretty sure this is $60 for a three month supply opposed to I think all of it's like a hundred dollars so yeah a lot more cheaper. I take additional folic acid which is recommended by my fertility specialist not everyone has to take this so don't take extra unless you are advised of a health professional. Me and Tim both take COQ100 that improves egg and sperm quality you do have to use this for about three months before you do notice results, but this really does work. It really helped him out. Menavert, which is just the men's version of Elevert. This stuff's pretty expensive as well. I'm pretty sure this was $90 for... You get three months supply, so it's not too bad, but it, this stuff does work. Um, Tim's sperm quality was... It's always been good. It was just a bit on the slower side, and now it's really strong, so... We can only put it down to this in the COQ100 because diet wise and that team hasn't changed anything else. And once I do ovulate, we will use the Conceive Plus Fertility Lubricant. I probably will start using this depending what my results are today, maybe tomorrow. We'll keep having sex every second day up until we get like our peak and then we'll do it twice a day for three days once I've got my peak. So we'll use these, they're just little individual applicators which are super handy you can get it in like a squeezy tube but it's just messy with these you get eight, eight applicators so you probably get like one to two months use out of this which is still really good so yeah i'll go test now and i'll show you guys the results i have just tested just awaiting those results so i tend to usually te like test with urine and then leave them not look at them because you go crazy <laughs> so i'll leave that for a couple of minutes i've written down the symptoms that i've had because the last couple of days have been super rough my belly is super super hard burning and like super bloated but it's super hard so i did speak to my fertility specialist they are a bit worried about hyperovulation syndrome I think it's called so they're going to keep a close eye on that really dizzy out of breath as you can probably tell I can barely talk without getting out of breath it's like you know when you're pregnant and everywhere you walk it just takes a breath that's like what I'm getting now which can be another symptom of that hyperovulation whatever um the cramping really really bad cramps they almost feel like constipation cramps but they're not it's just from pretty sure it's from there because it's kind of more in my front down where my uterus is and my lower back um when me and tim had sex last night it hurt so much it hurt so freaking bad um so i'm assuming that's all the follicles inside when they grow it does cause a lot of discomfort during this like intercourse but yeah, that was pretty horrible i had some more like pinkish brown spotting my cervical mucus is starting to change so it's going it's becoming a lot more like egg white mucus i hate the word mucus i find it which usually would indicate you're coming close to ovulation so for me anyway everybody's different you should never kind of go by your cervical mucus like you should never you know go by what somebody else is having kind of once you watch your body for a few months, if you're tracking ovulation, trying for a baby, you'll know what I mean. Everyone's different. And then, yeah, trouble sleeping. So I'm having a lot of trouble sleeping and I'm tired all the time. So it doesn't matter how much sleep I get, which it's none. <laughs> I'm just so freaking exhausted all day. 
snappy, angry. This has got to be by far the worst cycle that I've ever done with Let Yourself. So fingers crossed we do get some results this month. But I'll show you guys the ovulation test. Yay, so we got a solid smiley face. So ovulation is very close. So that means peak fertility. My line on my first response, it looks a lot darker in person. It's definitely not at peak yet on these tests because these will be they're usually super accurate so we need to wait for that left line to get a bit darker than the right line or as the same color but you know smiley face that is a good sign so yay i will check in with you guys probably tomorrow i just thought i'd show you guys this now that it's dried off a bit more a lot easier to see just because i'm not using a ring light today it's natural light so it's harder to capture on camera so as you can see, it has gotten a lot darker. Hey everyone. So cycle day 21 today. I'm pretty sure I ovulated either cycle day 19 in the night or cycle day 20 in the morning because I had some weird cramping. It was pretty intense, like pulling, tugging on my right side, which is where we did have those good follicles. So I'm assuming that was ovulation pains. And then, yeah, I... Was, had a lot of egg white CM and now since yesterday I've had no CM completely like dry so that's usually what happens to me after I ovulate so I wrote down some things it is so freaking cold here it's like two degrees I'm seriously like dying so cycle day 18 I got the peak on my clear blue cycle day 19 I got my peak on the first response so and I did, upon doing some research, I did figure out that the clear blues are that little bit more sensitive than the first response. So I am going to go off the clear blue. So when I got my peak cycle day 18, between 12 to 36 hours, you ovulate some even say 48 hours. So cycle day 18, got the peak of the clear blue, cycle day 19 peak with first response. So cycle day 19, I was very crampy on my right side. It was again really strange pulling tugging it was not nice two dominant follicles on my right side that were confirmed by a scan so i actually did go for an emergency scan because my fertility specialists were worried about an ovarian hyperstimulation i think it was called syndrome ohhs because i was in a lot of pain and i had a lot of fluid retention as well bloating really hard stomach but it just i just had two really good sized follicles i did have a cyst on my left ovary as well which would have caused some of the pain but it was super good sized follicle it was a 27 millimeter my dominant follicle the other one was a 22 so they're both good sizes so i definitely will drop one if not two eggs and yeah, so that's a really good size for the let result. Um, cycle day 19 at, in the night, so in the p.m. And then cycle day 20 in the a.m. I had diarrhea, which I don't usually get. I'm usually like pretty <laughs> constipated because I had gastric sleeve surgery and my fiber intake isn't great. So I usually do have to take supplements. So that's definitely something that's not normal for me. But I have noticed... Going back, looking at my old notes, because I kind of track everything every month. So looking through those notes, I do notice around ovulation, I do get a bit of diarrhea. So I put a 20, just still crampy on the right side. I had a headache that kind of lasted all day. It was a pretty intense headache too. It was kind of at the back of my head. And that's, yeah, that's when my um, CM stopped. So completely dry, no CM. So that usually for me indicates... I have ovulated and then yeah today just today I've actually felt pretty good just a little bit crampy all not on the just on the right side just kind of all over but yeah now the two week wait starts so I will start testing if my period doesn't come by maybe about the 10th of August I'll start testing so that will be 11 days so I probably won't make it that far. I usually start testing around eight days past ovulation. I'm impatient, <laughs> but I did, you know, I have gotten early, I think with Kay, with Andre, I got a pregnancy, positive pregnancy test super early. I think it was about seven DPO, 
we had a five day transfer so I got it it was pretty quick it was like three days after my transfer that I got a positive test which is pretty insane I thought it was like not real at first but it was and I am now taking my progesterone supplements and I've started on baby aspirin so they're the baby aspirin it's just a low dose aspirin it just thins the blood to your uterus so for me because I've had recurrent miscarriages it helps thin the blood to your uterus so it can help with those things and same with the progesterone the progesterone I am like prone to having low progesterone which your progesterone has to be at a stable level to sustain a pregnancy to help implantation so I'm straight on to those after I've related so I started those yesterday and yeah I guess I'll just keep documenting my symptoms this is usually when it gets super bad which worries me because <laughs> this cycle's already been horrible but I find yeah probably about five DPO so five days past ovulation that's when my symptoms get bad so it will be interesting to see what happens this month but yeah I'll keep you guys updated and I thought I'd just quickly show you so cycle day 19 is when I got my peak and then that was legit so cycle day 19 a.m. and then the bottom one was cycle day p.m. so you can see how quickly that change so it's super important once you start getting closer to ovulation to start testing twice a day because that just shows you like potentially if I didn't test in the morning I could have missed my surge seriously slept all day three DPO today so extremely tired I worked up until I worked pretty early I'm pretty sure I started at seven o'clock and worked till 12 so it was like a pretty short day but then i pretty much finished work and went straight to bed I was so freaking tired and I just feel pretty like grotty now like a bit out of it tired headachey I've had like quite a lot of cramps down there like weird cramping just like really dull cramping um I've got a lot of CM which is super watery which kind of doesn't usually happen I usually stay pretty dry until around seven days until my period so that's a bit different I have like noted that down I started charting my BBT which I have actually never done that but and I haven't done it from the start of this cycle so I don't know if it's going to work for me like within reading the chart but they say like your temperature dips at ovulation and at implantation so hopefully we see that implantation dip but I'm gonna look a bit more into that because it's something I'm not entirely sure on but my fertility specialist did say he recommends that I do it so we spoke with my fertility specialist today as well and we kind of said he's booked me another cycle so if this month doesn't work next month we'll go straight into a um, tracked cycle so at the moment we're just doing letrozole they do one scan next month if we don't feel pregnant this month fingers crossed but if we don't we'll go into a tracked cycle so what will happen there is we'll get given gonal f which is what we've had before it's an injection that grows your follicles so we'll take that for about 10 days they'll monitor my follicles by bloods and ultrasound and then once we my follicles get a good size they'll give us a trigger shot and I do take the letrozole as well so that's what we'll do we me and Tim had to like talk about it and what we'll do we'll do two months of that and if that doesn't work then we're just going to go straight back into a full stim cycle which is a full IVF cycle which I'm okay with I just definitely wanted to try you know a more natural approach to trying to conceive since I've lost all the weight I thought that you know my body would respond a little bit better so yeah we'll just see how that goes but yeah I'm fully open to it Andre was an IVF baby so we only got the one egg with him so we're super super lucky it worked but yeah we didn't have any eggs frozen otherwise we definitely would have gone straight back into that but yeah I guess my next video will be a live pregnancy test so we will see how we go I'll check in with you guys in a few days